Hey everyone, welcome! Have you ever considered upgrading the suspension on your bike? While the front suspension upgrade is fairly simple and straightforward, I found myself struggling a few years back when I was looking for a replacement shock. So in this video, I'm going to give you four easy steps to easily understand what kind of shock is going to fit your frame. And as a fifth step at the end, I might give you a couple more ideas or things that I learned along the way. So let's get to it. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by the information put out there by the bike manufacturer, by the shock manufacturer, but the reality is it all comes down to these four steps. And the first step is form factor. What kind of form factor shock do you have on your bike? The shock used by this specialized Epic Evo is what is called standard shock or standard mount with two eyelets. You have one eyelet at one end and another one here. Don't be fooled by things like this yoke. By the way, when you remove the shock, remember that there's nothing holding your swing arm of your bike. I use this bungee to control it. And this is a perfect time to check the bearings in your pivots. It should be moving nice and smooth. The huge majority of the shocks in the marketplace today will have an eyelet at this end. When it comes to this end, we have the second option, which is Trunian mount, in which case we have two bolts that will connect the shock right here on the side it will be the same for rock shocks fox or any other shock manufacturer the reason why tree and mount shocks came to be is because bike manufacturers needed shorter overall length shocks that provide the same travel or the same stroke that is actually the second step in selecting your shock the dimensions of the actual shock Shock manufacturers are going to provide you with the dimensions by providing you two numbers. First number, as you see here on this Epic Evo manual, is 190. And 190 would be the dimension here, eyelet to eyelet. This pretty much has to do with how much room is in the frame for the shock body itself. The second number provided is the actual shock stroke. It has to do with how much this shock would compress once the bike goes through its travel. By installing a shock with slightly longer stroke, you can get more rear travel on your bike. However, be careful because when you do that, the tire might touch the seat tube at maximum compression. So your mileage might vary. And I don't know if you think of it that way, but knowing the stroke of your shock can be very important when setting sag. For rock shocks, it's pretty simple because you have the sag gradients right here on the stanchion. For Fox, you don't have them, but if you know the overall travel, that's 40 millimeters for 100% use. If you were to set 33%, just divide that 40 by three, and that's how many millimeters you are gonna measure here from the end of the wiper seal to the o-ring and that's the reason why some bike manufacturers are going to provide you with the sag suggestions in millimeters and talk about the millimeters there's a couple of things that you need to know about your shock mounting hardware and that would be our step number three it's very rare that the shocks are installed just like this with the bare eyelet you usually have some sort of bushing pushed right in in case of fox you have this poly or igus uh, bu bushings that are being pushed right in like that and you see it already installed from the factory here at one end SRAM uses something similar they're gonna use DU bushings like this that are pushed right in you are gonna need a press for that one of the reasons why I prefer the Fox method those bushings together with a couple of seals are provided in the hardware kit bag but the one thing that's gonna define that mounting hardware is the dimensions of this little spacer. That is something that the frame manufacturer is gonna ask you for because this little spacer allows them to install that shock onto the frame. In this case, this is a 20 by eight. And by the way, RockShox calls this a three piece kit. You can see these two little pieces sitting right on the spacer itself. And 20 by eight is gonna be the overall length here is 20 millimeters and eight is the internal dimension of this spacer by the way all these spacers are going to have 12.7 millimeters on the outside and that is industry standard so the frame attachment point design for that shock and the bolt used to affix the shock it's going to dictate ultimately the dimensions of that little spacer 
What about trunnion mount shocks? For trunnion mount, you're gonna have two bolts that are tightened right here on the shock head and they can be different sizes. This is dictated by the frame, so the bike manufacturer. Also unique can be little spacers like this or bushings that go into the frame, whether that's aluminum or carbon. And this is specific to the bike as well. So make sure that you don't lose these or if there are wearable parts like for the Scott bikes, you get the replacement ones from the bike manufacturer. And look, I know I haven't covered absolutely every option out there, but the huge majority of what you find on our bikes today, it's gonna be pretty much what we've described in the first three parts. Number one being the form factor, standard or trunnion. Number two or step two was dimension and stroke. Number three, we talked about hardware or the mounting hardware. And in number four, we're gonna talk a little bit about the shock tune, so, so important for the overall feel of the bike. Usually manufacturers build these shocks with a few tunes that may or may not be in sync with the suspension kinematics of your bikes. And that's why shocks like this one, this one says RX Tune from Specialized is their cross country tune for their shocks. And if we are to plug the serial number in the Trail Forks app or web app, you're gonna see that this shock uses a medium rebound tune it has light compression and zero tokens, so zero volume spacers installed by default. For the Fox shock that I bought as a replacement for that, you can see clearly 0.4 spacer already installed in it from the get-go. LCL, LRM, and CMF compression, rebound, and the third one talks about lockout. And that medium compression that the shock came with was replaced by light compression by replacing the shim stack inside the shock. That's a service that Fox provides. And that way I could get a Fox shock that is pretty much fine tuned for that Epic Evo as per the specialized RX tune. So follow the four steps to replace an older shock with the newer one to replace a RockShox Deluxe like this with a Fox that gives me more features for adjustability. And as a step five, here's a couple other things that I have learned along the way. And the first one of those is, as you buy a shock, you're gonna have the two eyelets here in line. The yoke on the Specialized is gonna require this eyelet to be at 90 degrees from the top of the shock. You can easily rotate it to its new position if you don't have air in the shock. Normally the shock is shipped with air in it. You will not be able to do this. So just release the air and you'll be fine. And one last thing, in 2023, chances are that you can find shocks and forks that are pretty darn good straight out of the box. So I would highly, highly recommend to learn how to tune them. I mean, the air spring is fairly easy to tune with volume spacers. When it comes to the damper, they became more sophisticated. And if you were to take your suspension to a suspension shop to fine tune it for your liking, I would highly suggest that you ride the bike with the suspension the way it is from the factory. And when you go to them, Tell them exactly what you like or what you don't like about the suspension so they can really customize it for yourself. So what about you guys? What do you do to fine tune your suspension? Do you go to a suspension shop? Do you just use the ShockWiz from SRAM and do it by yourself? Do you adjust your suspension by ear? Would you add anything else to my little how-to today? Let us know in the comments below. Hope you found this useful. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers, guys. Cheers.